So this next unit is called decision making. It is one of the hardest things in business because when you make a decision, you're responsible for it. So many organizations and other ones I've been involved in uh, and my own life, it's always hard to make a decision because when you choose a path, that path might work out or it might not work out. And depending on the amount of risk, it makes that decision all the more agonizing. So the question is then, is there a best way to do it? I would suggest is probably the major theme of what we're running here. And <clears throat> what are some of the pitfalls uh, when we think about decision making, okay? So if we look at this whole unit here and this, this chapter as well, we got to you know think about defining the decision-making process and what exactly is it. And we've got this issue of a structured versus a ill-structured or a non-structured problem. A structured problem is one that is very, we know all the information, we know all the details, we know the consequences. It's very, very clear. So for example, you're on a street corner and you're looking one way and you're looking the other way and you're wondering which direction should I go? Well, that, that's what we would consider a pretty structured problem because you can look down the street both ways and get a good bit of information. However, an ill-structured problem is a case where you're stood up on a corner and you're looking down two caves and they're both black and you can't see. So your choice is really a matter of luck as much as anything. You might make the right choice, you might not. So ill-structured ill -structured problems lead to poor decision-making. So what we need to do is we need to be able to ensure that we structure our decision-making properly. That would be the you know, a kind of a help to ensure that we make good decisions. We're also going to introduce a topic called the rational decision-making model. And a rational decision-making model assumes that you take in as much information as you possibly can, weigh out that information, positives and negatives, pluses and minuses, and make a decision based on that information. So we'll call it evidence-based decision-making, okay? And we heard a lot of that over the last year with regards to the coronavirus uh, and, and rational decision making is really exactly that. So we're going to look at this concept of rational decision making or evidence based decision making in order to understand how it works and you know what the advantages of it really are. We're all going to we're also going to introduce this this thing called bounding or bounded rationality. And, and bounding is all the information that you have. You know. Obviously, there is an infinite amount of information out there if you choose to take all the time to gather it. But the problem is, because you're taking so long to gather the information, you don't make the decision. So you, at some point, you have to say, this is enough information on which to make a decision. And that's what we call the bounding process, or uh, what we call a bounded rationality, where we take as much information as we think is necessary in order to make a good decision. Doesn't mean we have complete information, but it does indicate that we have enough to be able to make a, a very good decision. In most cases, that is the case. You just can't wait for all the information to come in. Uh, discuss the impact of framing and cognition biases. Well, really what we're talking about here is bias. And what are some of the biases that we as humans bring to the problem when we make decisions? Are there things that make our decisions irrational or less rational? And uh, we're, we're talking about all kinds of biases there, and we'll be introducing some of those. And we're going to look at a, an interesting topic, too, that is so common in business and so common in the business world, and that's something called escalation of commitment. And that escalation of commitment, we hear tell of someone being all in to something. And escalation of commitment means that because you've already invested a whole bunch of energy and resources on a particular path or a particular course of action, you're committed to putting more into it. Muskrat Falls is an example. Muskrat Falls started off as a $6 billion project. It has now escalated to a $15 billion project. Now, the question then has been asked many, many times over the course of the project is, because the costs have risen so much, why didn't we just abandon it and say, this is not going to work, let's scrap it? Well, the reason that it wasn't scrapped is because we had so much done, and my goodness, we're not going to walk away from it now. You know, we've got a dam built, we've got a power line. We can't just abandon it and say this is of no value and have nothing for it. So we, we have this 
problem that exists in the business world called escalation of commitment. And we're going to look at why that is a problem, how that is a problem, and what we can do to kind of address that problem. We're also going to look at the human element, emotions, moods, and these sorts of things, and how it affects decision making. And we're going to look at another very interesting uh, concept, and we've got a couple of little projects on this, uh, in the realm of group decision making. The question is, do individuals make better decisions in and of themselves, or do groups make better decisions in and of themselves? And what can groups do to uh, affect the decision making process for the better and for the worse? And we're going to look at other, well, I'm going to call it a, a host of other topics or you know, several other topics that deal with how can we make better decisions. So that's effectively what this particular uh, chapter is about. And when you look at this, when you look at this, really the fundamental, the fundamental issue is what is decision making? Okay, so that's, that's really the fundamental question that we're asking. So decision making is really a process of developing a commitment. And there's a key word, a commitment to some course of action. It involves making a choice among several action alternatives requiring a commitment of resources. Decision making is also a process of problem solving. The problem exists when there is a gap between some existing state and some desired state. So what we got when we think about when we think about this uh, issue of decision making, we've got several alternatives. So we got an alternative here, an alternative here, an alternative here. And our question is should we do this route, this route, or this route? <clears throat> and you know the more op more options we have, let's I, I'm assuming in my little example here are three alternatives. Maybe there's 30, maybe there's 300, maybe there's 3,000. What alternatives should we check? And obviously we cannot possibly rationalize 3,000 in our human brain, that is. In a, we can if we have an infinite amount of time, but we have to consider that there's a time constraint on decision making, right? Uh, it, it's like, okay, we need to assess, this is the balance that we need to make whenever we make a decision. We need to assess all the options, but on the other hand, we need to make a decision. So the question is, how many options can we possibly look into uh, uh, deep enough in order to make a good decision? So what we normally do is if we have a whole bunch of options, let's assume we have 300 op alternatives uh, for a decision. We need to do a, some sort of a triaging process where we find the options that are best as opposed to all of them. So what we need to be able to do is to assess options very quickly, narrow it down, narrow it down, narrow it down, narrow it down until we got probably no more than three potential options. And there, this gap that we talk about, this gap is like, for example, here's what you want. If this is the level or the height that you want, if, if this, is a, this is our level of, you know, whatever we want, and we want to be up here. We want, uh, we want a, a decision that will bring us up here. We're down here now. We want to make a, bring us up to here. This difference between where we want to be and where we are is often called the gap. This, this height difference between